They say when you moan, the devil don't know what you're saying. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Do 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 oh, 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 I love you, Jesus, with everything inside of me. I love, love you. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Amen, 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 Good morning and happy Sabbath. Good morning and happy Sabbath. What a good day to be in the house of the Lord, amen? 
My brother said that number eight, at the cross. First of all, hold on. Before we get into at the cross, did everybody have a good week? Everybody have a good week? All right. At the cross, where I first saw the light and I received it. Let's sing for Jesus. At last, my Savior bleed. My Savior bleed. And did my sovereign die? Would he devote? Would he devote? That sacred head for someone. Was at the cross, at the cross, at the cross, where I first where saw the light, the light and the burdens of my heart that just rolled away. It was there that I received my sight. Now I'm happy, y'all. Somebody says, was it for crimes? For crime, Lord, that I have done. He suffered. He suffered upon that tree. Amazing pity. Amazing pity, y'all. Grace unknown. Was at the cross, at, at the, the cross, cross, at the, the cross, cross, where I first, first saw the light, light and the burdens, the burdens on, on my heart that just seemed to away. away. It was there, it I was there, there by, by that I received I my received sight, I received my, my sight, Lord, and now I am happy. Says, but drops of grief, but drops of grief can never can repay. Never repay. No, the debt I owe, Lord, you know I owe it all to you. Here, here, Lord, I got to give myself, got to give myself away. Myself I don't have nothing away. else to give you but me. Y'all would sing it like you really mean it this morning. It was at that at rugged the cross, cross, at the cross, where I first, where I first saw the light, and the, burdens, and the burdens on my heart rolled away. Rolled away. It was there, it was there by I received, I received my sight. I 
leave it right there at the cross. We're going to leave it right there. All week, me and my baby have been singing this song together. Hey, all week we've been saying. Y'all ready? Okay, you ready, honey? Help us out now. Oh, the blood that Jesus shed for me. I need y'all help. Oh, the, woo, that we, we've been singing all week. Every minute. Every minute, every hour, never loses power, full of love, that Jesus. I'm going to follow your lead, Roger. Let's get it. Come on, come on. Say, all the blood that Jesus shed for me. Don't drag it to me. All the blood that Jesus shed for me. Every minute. Here I never lose his power for the blood that Jesus shed for me. Say, what can watch away my sins for the blood that Jesus shed for me? What can make me? What can make me? Oh, 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 the blood that Jesus shed for me. I wish we could pick it up, Rod. I wish we could fuck. Hey. Oh, the blood that Jesus shed for me. Oh, the blood that Jesus shed for me. Every minute, every hour, never lose his power. Up, Roger. What can make me whole again for the blood that Jesus shed for me? <laughs> what can wash away with my sins for the blood that Jesus shed for me? Let's go home. Oh, the blood that Jesus shed for me. Talking about oh, the that blood, blood that Jesus shed for me. Hey, every minute, every hour, leave it there. Every never loses power. Oh, every minute, every hour. Watch out, Joe. Never loses power. Hey, every minute. Here I am, never lose his power, all the blood that Jesus shed for me. Now in the old days, we used to pick that up about, you know, we were on 33 and the 3rd. But the old days, we used to sing it at 78. But I thank God for my brother who's older than I am. Amen? Thank God. 19 says, glory to his name. Now, that was one of my mama's favorite songs. Glory to his name. Down at the cross where my Savior died. Down where for cleansing from sin I cried. There to my heart was a blood applied. Singing glory to his sweet name. I wish y'all would sing it like I feel it. Well, down at the cross where my Savior died. I hear you. Down with for sin, from sin. I cry. There to my heart, Lord. There to my heart. Will that blood apply? Singing glory, glory to his name, y'all. 
Sing it, sing it, sing it, glory, glory to my Jesus' name, y'all. Sing it, glory, Jesus, his sweet name. Dead to my heart, y'all. Dead to my heart was the blood applied. Two says, I'm so wondrously, I am so wondrously safe from sin. I'm Jesus, so sweetly, so sweet. he abides oh, with me. There at the cross, where he took me, in, y'all, sing it, glory. I wish y'all would sing it like you mean it. His precious name, y'all. Sing glory. My Jesus name. Down to my heart. For the blood of life. Sing it glory. First four says, come to this fountain. Hey, come. So rich, you ought to cast that poor at the same feet. Somebody said, Jump in, come on, hey, hey, at the place. Sing it, glory. I'm gonna sing it all by myself. Somebody, somebody sing. Sweet name, sing glory to his name. Get to my heart, y'all. We end it with this, Roger. What can wash? Uh, I'm talking about the blood of Jesus. Oh, sing it like you really want it. Sing it like you really mean it. Of Jesus, what can make? Make me whole again. Oh, oh, Say nothing but the blood of Jesus. Oh, oh, precious, oh, precious, is that? That makes me white. That makes me white. Break me white as snow. Sing. No other fountain. Hear the fountain. Oh. I 
dare you to leave it right there. Say nothing. nothing. Nothing but the blood in the blood that had healing, healing, healing power. I say nothing, nothing but oh, the blood. It just make you walk right. Bless the Lord, oh my son. Lord, and all that's deep within us, we give you all the honor. We give you all the glory because you are truly worthy. If you got joy in your heart this morning, join me by saying, Bless the Lord. Bless my soul, my soul, one and all that's deep within me. Lord, I bless your holy name. We magnify your name. We do it because you are so great. If you've got love in your heart, say bless. Oh, my soul. On and all that's deep within me, I bless your holy name. I magnify your name, Jesus, because when I look back just from this past week, you've been shelter around me. Danger, see, he has done great things. Has he done it for you? Has he done the same thing for you? Hey. Hey. He's a marvelous, hey. victorious, hey. glorious hey. thing. Hey. And we magnify you. We glorify your name, Jesus. Oh, yes, we do. Now the Lord is in his holy temple. Let all the earth, let all the earth keep silent. Say the Lord. Oh, I know he's here this morning. He's in his holy temple. Say the Lord. He's in his holy temple. Let all the earth. Let all the earth keep silence. Let all the earth, all the earth, Lord, keep silence. Before. Before him. Now keep silence. Keep silence. Lord, we adore you. Keep silence. Place nothing of no one above you. Before him. Now lift the righteous, most powerful name above all names. And say amen. Say amen. What a mighty God you and I serve this morning. Amen. Lift up your heads, O ye gates, and be ye lifted up. Ye everlasting doors, and the King of glory shall come in. Who is this King of glory? The Lord strong and mighty, the Lord mighty in battle. 
Lift up your heads, O ye gates. Even lift them up, ye everlasting doors. And the king of glory shall come in. Who is this king of glory? The Lord of hosts. He is the king of glory. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Say pray. Praise God. Not some, but all blessings. Oh, all blessings. We ought to praise him. All creatures, every living creature, every living creature. Lord, hear me low. Hear me low. We ought to praise him above ye. Above ye. Praise him above ye. All heavenly folks. Oh, yeah. Him again for that son that died on Calvary that you and I might have life and have it more abundantly. We worship him in spirit and in truth because he's still a God that sits high. He looks low. He knows our hearts. He knows our minds. What a powerful, powerful being. He's above all names. I just need to know, is he still worthy? Is he still worthy? Hallelujah. He's still worthy. Hallelujah. You're still worthy. Amen. Let us repeat our fourth commandment. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Six days shall thou labor and do all thy work. The but the seventh, seventh day, day is the Sabbath, Sabbath of the Lord thy God. In it thou shalt not do any work, thou, nor thy sons, nor thy daughters, nor thy manservant, nor thy maidservant, nor thy cattle, nor thy strangers that's within thy gates. For in six days the Lord made the heaven and the earth, the sea and all that is in them, and rested the Sabbath day, Wherefore, the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and hallowed it. Let us pray. Eternal God, we are so grateful for your Sabbath day. Lord, we're so thankful for what Jesus has done for us. And so, Father, we come today, fellas, worshiping you and giving you praise, glory, and honor. And so, Lord, we say and have your way in our lives today. Lord, change anything that's in us that's not according to your will. And, Lord, we just pray that we... We'll have a great time in your name today. Bless the man servant who's going to break the bread of life. And Lord, we will be careful to give you the praise, the glory, and the honor. For we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. seated. Happy Sabbath, everyone. What a blessing it is to have the opportunity one more time to be in the house of God. Come on, give God a hand of praise because without him, we wouldn't be here. Without him, we wouldn't have the sun to shine on us. Without him, the Sabbath would not be the Sabbath. So you ought to be thankful to have the opportunity to be in the house of God one more time. Just a couple of announcements. We want to continue to remind you of the prayer call on Sunday and Wednesday. We're having a great time. We know that God is a great God. He's done miraculous things for us because as we lift up the name of Jesus Christ, God shows up and he shows up. 
So we want to encourage you that if you haven't been there, come on the prayer line. Amen. Make your request known. The warriors on the wall of Zion will pray for you. And through that prayer, God will bless you and keep you. We want to acknowledge our visitors this morning. Do we have any visitors? If you're visiting, please stand at this time. If you're visiting, anybody visiting? Amen. 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 You know, I'm going to have to get on the deacons uh, because they're already supposed to have the mic in their hands so that we can know who these lovely people of God are. Tell us who you are, sir. My name is Arab Jaffa. And my church is Mount Zion. All right. And that young lady right there, she's waiting for the mic. My name's Monica Jaffet. We are members of Mount Sinai. Amen. Amen. We're so thankful to have you here worshiping with us. And if you feel that you need to go to a different, higher level, you can consider yourselves to be members of Solomon's Porch. And we will welcome you with open arms. Praise God. Praise God. Want to uh, remind everyone, all men, tomorrow morning at 9 o'clock, and I keep emphasizing 9 o'clock because you need to be there at 9 o'clock. And there are those who know they need to be there before 9. Elder Forbes, Francis Forbes back there, need to be at Golden Corral. We're going to have our meeting tomorrow morning at Golden Corral for men's ministry at 9 o'clock. There were those who are in the throes of suffering and bereaf. We want to remember Sister Simone Lavelle who lost her mother last week and we know that she's watching and that you're having a tough time. We know that the enemy wants to discourage you for you to be despondent. But we're praying that God will show up and he will hold you in his arms. There are others who are sick with maladies and we're praying for them. I want you to pray this morning in your heart for Sister Joy Hostler. Sister Joy, we're praying for you and we know that God is going to keep you. He has shown you that he loves you, and he will never forsake you. And for all those who are sick, we're so thankful that God is a great God. He's a mighty God, and he'll never leave us. I, I see my youngest son in the house. He don't, he don't like for me to call him. But this is the gentleman that you were praying for, C. Claude. Stand up, stand up, you and Tiffany. Stand up, stand up. And I want, I, I want both of you to know this, that these folk who have given uh, a hand of applause have been praying for you. They will continue to do that. Because as you know, as I said to you, sir, you have a calling on your life. God wants you to work for him. And if you do that, he'll make you a living testimony of his goodness. You may be seated. See, what, what, what y'all don't know, I'm going to hear about that later. He's going to be talking about, Dad, why you called me up? Why you had me? See, I know I'm going to hear it. But I had to say it. Anyhow, had to say it. want you to know that we are preparing for fall evangelism. The porch is going to have fall evangelism. And here's what we want you to know. It's going to start September 30th. We're going to have our first speaker here.
and it's going to go through the month of December. But here's what I'm asking you. I'm asking you not to be selfish in heart because you know people who need to hear about Jesus Christ. You have co-workers. You have family members. You have neighbors who live on your block who you need to invite. Pick them up and bring them to fall evangelism so they can experience what you already know to be true, which is that God loves them he will provide for them, and he ultimately wants to save them. So we want you to start praying now. God, who are the folk that you will put in my path that when I ask them, when I invite them, that they will say yes, and you will give me the opportunity to add more stars to my crown. Because I want you to know this. Mrs. White says that there will be no starless crowns in heaven. You got to help somebody to be saved. And if you don't think so, guess what? Guess what? But we all need to help somebody to be saved. So we're going to be preparing for fall evangelism, which starts September the 30th. Now, uh, where, where's uh, Elder Earl Mike? He always wants to get away. We got some birthdays. We got some birthdays that that we need you pastor, to we lead out on. We got some birthdays, Pastor. Yeah, yo, yo, we got some birthdays. We got some birthdays. Sister Erling Briggs is having her birthday tomorrow. Sister Briggs, I know you're watching. Uh, Elder Johnson, how old will she be? 94 or 95? 94 tomorrow. Who, who, who you pointing at, sir? I, I don't, who? Oh, Sister Rhonda having a birthday? Okay, when, when is your birthday? Monday the 5th, all right. Well, we're going to wish you a happy birthday also. And I understand Sister Florine Patterson got a birthday coming up on the 9th, Friday. This coming Friday. She got a birthday. Now, she shares that day with another Gentlemen in the congregation, Elder Vincent Ascent. Uh, Elder, pa wait, Pastor Elder, Matthews. pass, pass, Pastor wait, Matthews. Matthews. pass, wait, man. Roger Mack Jr. What? is, yes, his birthday is the fifth. Speak up, Roger, we can't hear you. Well, I'm speaking in the Mac, so whatever level the Mac is, is how I speak. <laughs> Thank you. So, so your son's birthday is what date? Monday the 5th. Okay. Right. Amen. <laughs> pass, pass, I'm sorry. Pass, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I, I got to go back to Ella Ascent. I remember when we did the 60th birthday. Was this the 60th? It was the 60th birthday celebration for Ella Ascent. At North Orlando, no, North, what, where's that, the, the, you know, by Dunkin' Donut? Uh-huh. By the Dunkin' Donut on 436? Uh-huh. Okay, Advent Health North. Yeah. There's a little Dunkin', and there's a little place, and, and six, and, and he's how old now? How, how, how old are you going to be, Elder? For the mighty God, we serve. Huh? Hey! I, I I have a All right. Kelsey. 
Who is that? Michael Asset said yes, that? Yes, yeah, Okay. Little, little well, here, here's the greatest testament of the power of God. Yeah. Some years ago, Elder Asset was diagnosed with prostate cancer. But God gave him the greatest gift. Yes, sir. Gave him life. Now, now, some of you, and, and we're getting ready to sing happy birthday. Hold, hold up, sir. Uh, some of you uh, have been praying for me, and those prayers have been stacked up. They pushed the surgery back until this Wednesday. So on Wednesday morning, I need y'all to pray fast. Yeah. I need you to lay prostrate before God, but I'm trusting him. I know he's going to bring us through without any hesitation. Come on, sing happy birthday to you folk. Come on, sing. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Dear member, happy birthday to you. One more time. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday. Dear member, happy birthday to you. Woo! Now, y'all say what you will. I've been away for one or two Sabbaths, but I want you to know that, okay, okay, that's the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost. Somebody said three. But page 66, Pastor, long, is that 66? 66 says we are standing on the promises. That's what we're going to do. And if you've got a songbook, just stand to your feet. We might be able to put the words up on the screen. 66. Stand on the of God. That's 67. Say standing. Come on, let's sing. Standing. 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 Standing on the promises of I'm standing. Oh, I'm standing. I'm standing on the Oh yeah. Verse 2 says standing on the promises. Standing on the promise that cannot fail. When the howling storms of doubt and fear of sin by the living word I shall prevail. I'm standing, standing on the promises of God. Come on, let's say standing. standing. Well, standing. I'm standing on the promises of Christ. Oh, I'm standing. I'm standing on the floor. Oh, yeah. Verse 3 says, standing on the promises. Christ the Lord. Bound to him eternally by love's strong cord. Overcoming with the Spirit's sword. Bro, oh, I'm standing. Oh, I'm standing. I'm standing. Oh, 
to give it that flavor. I'm standing on the promises of God. Ooh. Standing on oh, yes, the promises. Standing on his promises. Give him some volume, y'all. Church, standing on his promises. Help me say it, church. Oh, stand. Standing oh. on his promises. Ooh, standing oh. on his promises. Oh. Standing oh. on his promises. Standing oh. on his promises. I am standing. seated. All remain standing. I apologize for the reading of his powerful word. Amen. 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 All of those who are standing, not on their graves, but on the promises of God, please stand with me. Praise the Lord. His word comes to us this morning from Psalm 119. That's the division Psalm 119, reading from verse 103 through 112. You may follow with me as it's on the board, on the screen. Don't have to look for it, so I don't have to ask you if you have found it. It's on the screen. Let's read together. How sweet are thy words unto my taste. Yea, sweet. May I start again, please? How sweet are thy words unto my taste. Yea, sweeter than thy honey to my mouth. Through thy precepts I get understanding. Therefore I ate every false way. None. Thy word is a lamp unto my feet. And a light unto my path. Oh Lord, I'm standing. I have sworn... And I will perform it, that I will keep thy righteous judgments. I am afflicted very much. Quicken me, O Lord, according unto thy word. It's off. Accept, I beseech thee, the free will offering of my mouth, O Lord, and teach me thy judgments. My soul is continually in my hand, yet I do not forget thy law. The wicked have laid a snare for me, yet I erred not from thy precepts. The testimonies of thy testimonies have I taken as an heritage forever, for they are the rejoicing of my heart. I have inclined my heart to perform thy statutes always, even unto the end. Verse 13. Is it verse 13? Is that it? Here ends the reading of a portion of God's holy word. God promised to bless the hearers and the doers of his word. Someone asked me why not read there. It was off the screen on that side for me. Thank you. You may be seated. Be still and know that I am God. Be still and know that I am God. Be still and know that I am God. 
I'll see you through. I'll see you through. I'll see you through. I'll see you. See you. See you through. Just try. Trust in me, trust in me, why not trust in me, just trust, why not trust, why not trust in me. I am the truth and the life. I am the way, the truth, the mighty God we serve. Amen. There's a storm out on the ocean and it's headed this way. But as long as we know that God is in control, there's nothing that we've got to worry about. Amen. I'm just telling you right now, I had a chance to run into a couple of personnel this, this last, past week and they were surprised to hear they really were surprised to hear that great things are happening at the porch. Amen? Now let me say that again. Great things are happening at the porch. How many of you this morning saw the new lettering on the sign outside? I've got one person, maybe two. I got two. And he, uh, three. And they came all the way from where? Lakeland. Drove all the way from Lakeland just as, and they saw it before some of the other. Uh, I'm just saying great things are happening at the porch. All right? 
Elder Johnson, thank you for making that come through. But we've got a permanent sign. When the digital sign is not up and operational, we got a permanent sign out there. Amen. Good, good things are happening at the porch. And we'll, we'll run down with a few other things that are about to happen. But let's move into this by simply saying that God has blessed us and he's continuously blessing us at the porch. And we're going to ask the deacons to come forth now while we return a faithful tithe, a faithful offering to him. Those that can hear and see me, you know who you are. We could not survive if it were not for your contributions. You in Atlanta, Georgia, you in California, you down in West Palm Beach, you know who you are. And we say thank you for allowing the Holy Spirit to touch your heart. Hey! The Lord is blessing me. When is he doing it, Roger? Right now. Oh, right now. Say the Lord. The Lord. Lesson me. Not later, but right now. Right now. Oh, right now. Sister Patterson, what did he do for you this morning? He won't be up this morning. me on. I'm 
that blessing we're able to bless others many of you may not know but on Wednesday nights we started spaghetti again and we're blessing those little ones from down at Magnolia Court This Wednesday, we're going to do pizza. Huh? So, in the words of Sister Zanita, we can do both. You continue to pray, and we will continue to bless on this end. And it comes full circle that God is blessing at this location and the fact we're being a blessing more people are coming Raymond more people are coming more people are being touched and I'm here to tell you that by this time at the end of this month I ain't predicting nothing but I'm just saying to you I feel that he's going to open the windows even more Huh? To God be the glory. Great things he's doing at the porch. Please stand. Will a man rob God? Yet ye have robbed me. But ye say, Lord, wherein have we robbed thee? In tithes and offerings. The Bible says ye are cursed with the curse, for ye have robbed me, even this whole nation. Bring ye then all the tithes into the storehouse, that there may be meat in mine house, and prove me now herewith, saith the Lord of hosts, if I will not open the windows of heaven. I'm going to pour you out a blessing that there shall not be room enough to receive it. Lord, I thank you. We thank you for the many blessings that you have poured out on this congregation, this ministry. Not only the financial blessings, but the blessings of health and strength and the discernment to know where that help and strength comes from. We say thank you for your son Jesus so we might be in the position to bless others. Be with us now as these tithes, these offerings are returned to you. We magnify your name. We glorify you because there's nothing to no one above you. Be with us now as your son delivers the word, we will be so humble to give you all the honor, all the praise in that holy name we say. Amen. We give thee back thy writer said the grace physician is here I'm here this day 
And as I stand before you, I stand to pray with you. And also that you will pray for me. I say this because many folks aren't aware of the obstacles that leaders go through. You may see me jumping and dancing and singing and all, all, all this. But you don't know what's going on, the battle I'm fighting. And so we don't know of each other's battles that they're fighting. I'm just going to ask you, even though a person may be smiling in the face, you don't know what's going on in the heart. Pray for that person. Some of us mechanism is to show more happiness when we're having more sorrows on the inside. You don't want to see me tear up. But I've had, and so are many of us. It's not just when you're laying down sick that you're sick. It's not just when you have a broken foot that you can't walk. You hop around with smiles on your face. And I can tell you that with tearful heart. That many of us suffer a lot. Pastor said something this morning. You don't know what it's like to be a pastor. You don't know what it's like to be a manager. You don't know what it's like to be a father at home. Or a mother. A hen protects its, tr its chickens. And so are we. So I'm asking you today to not only pray for yourself. Be like Job, obedient enough. That when God said he should pray for his friends that ridiculed him. He was obedient and prayed for his friends. And God blessed them immensely. In Hebrews chapter 4 and verse 16. It said, let us therefore come boldly to the throne of grace. That we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. Is there anyone with needs? Is there anyone going through? Pastor made mention earlier. Sister Hustler. The bereaved family. We noticed Elder um, Lviv, um, Levine was here this morning. His wife's pa mother passed. And he's going through, yet he stood up. And I'm just telling you. Even Deacon Lewis called this morning and said that he's sick. He can't make it. A lot of us are going through, brethren. So I'm going to ask you at this time, with all heads bow or eyes closed, however you want to reverence God or you know best to reverence God, let us approach the throne. Gracious Father and our Lord, here we are once more in your presence. We come to give you praise. We come to give you honor. We come to lift you up because thou art God and none beside you. Father, they are sick among us. There are those that are suffering with financial needs. There are those that are troubled at home. Illness where mentalness take control of the minds. Directions are not being heeded to. Father, trouble in the marriage and among children. And in the church, the enemy that go it's about walking and seeking like a roaring lion, seeking who we may devour, walks in the church, Lord, and stops on our toes. And sometimes try to tell us that someone in the church don't like you. But God, we pray that every impediment and everything, obstacles that come up against your children, every sickness, every disease that you will remove them as you said by your stripes we are healed God we know that you're able and you're capable we know that you know of every situation but you ask that we bring them to you and so here we are today bringing them and presenting them at your feet Father that you'll take care of them touch each and every one our pastor is about to speak today to us. Father, we pray that you speak to him. Speak through him to us. That we'll hear your word and be strengthened. And Lord, that we'll go from here. As strong stalwarts. Delivering your word. And Lord, that each and every one of us will be empowered. 
and that your church will continue growing and moving forward. In the name of Jesus, I pray today, Lord, and anything that I fail of asking of you today, I pray that you'll not fail of granting it because we believe you and we know you can. All these favors we ask in none other than the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Let the church of God say amen and amen. question is how can you let a day go by without praising the Lord
every day that God gives us, we should be willing to praise his name. Let us pray. Father God, we come today because we need a word from you. We need God to be refreshed. We need to be restored. We need to be renewed. And so I'm asking in the name of Jesus Christ that you would do just that. You know, God, I'm nothing, a broken vessel. But you are the pot. I am the clay. And I pray that you will make me over again. Every heart, God, everyone under the sound of my voice in the house and those who are online, Open their hearts. Make them thirsty. Make them hungry for the word of God. Because we know that you will fill us until we want no more. We thank you in faith because we know you have heard and you will answer in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Sometimes I feel like Noah preaching and preaching and letting those of you who are watching online and those of you who are in the house know that it's going to rain. The Bible says that it won't be water but fire this time. There is a seriousness about where we are. Anybody who has read anything in the Bible knows that we're living in the last days of earth's history. And yet, on Sabbath and Sunday, there are those who come to the house of God. There are those who watch online, but they have a superficial relationship with God. It's not a real relationship. That's why we come here. That's why we preach, Elder Mike and I. That's why we pray, because we need to have a real relationship with God. Superficial won't keep you, won't make you whole. It won't hold you under the attack of the enemy. And so the Bible lets us know that God one day will say to some folk who have that kind of relationship, I never knew you. Words that are cutting, words that are, 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 are heartbreaking, I never knew you. So in these perilous times, in these times of the end, in these times when God is gathering his sheep, and I want you to know he's gathering his people together. He says that there are other sheep who are not of this fold. I'm going to bring them also. That we need to keep learning of God. We need to keep learning his will for us. We need to study to show ourselves approved as workmen for God, not those who are in retirement. But those who are workmen for God, those who are willing to go out and share the good news of God. But you can't do that if you don't know him. God gave me this word to share with you entitled, The Proof is in the Pudding. The Proof is in the Pudding. It is stated that this phrase was coined in the 14th century, that it basically refers to a meat product. There were those in the 14th century who would put 
different ingredients together. It's kind of like when you eat sausage. You know, they put different herbs and they put different products in together to make sausage, which back then they call, and still in England, they call it blood pudding. They would put all of these ingredients together. And when they would talk about it, when those who put them together would say how good it was and how great the product ended up being, there were those who questioned. And when they had questions, the people who made it would say, the proof is in the pudding. If you want to know how good it is, if you want to know how I'm testifying that it is great, then you got to taste it. Because the proof is in the pudding. Generally, this expression is used to say that the real worth, the success, or effectiveness of something can only be determined by putting it to the test, by trying or using it, just as the best test of a pudding is to eat it. I remember my mother used to make a banana pudding. Well, actually, she would make two every Sunday. And there were those, my relatives who would come by. There were neighbors who come by. And they would sit there and eat that banana pudding. And as they were eating it, they would say to my mother, Lord, have mercy. This is mighty good. And I would look sometimes. That's why I don't eat banana pudding now. She made them all the time. But I would look at them. And I said, well, how, how, how do you know it's good? They said, because the proof is in the pudding. You got to taste it. Elder Patterson, you got to taste it to know that the proof is in the pudding. Preachers, teachers, missionaries, and disciples of God who understand the time in which we're living, what we're supposed to do is go out and share the message of the good news of God. We're supposed to be elated about how God is blessing us. We're supposed to tell them that we're standing on the promises of God. We're supposed to share with them the testimony of all the things that we have been through and how God in his grace and mercy has brought us through. And when they hear us testify, they will look at us and say, hey brother, hey sister, how can you testify of God being like that? You said because the proof. The proof is in the pudding. You got to try him to know him. You got to spend time with him to know him. You got to study his word to know him. Because the proof is in the pudding. Here's what David says. Psalms 34 and verse 8. This is what David says. He says, O taste. He said, oh, taste and see. See, because when you taste something, that sense of taste says something to your eyes. David says, taste and see that the law is good. See, if you haven't tasted, then you can't see it. You can't know it. You can't testify of it. He says, taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man that trusteth in him. You see, when you taste the pudding, because the proof is in the pudding, when you taste it and you see it, then you begin to trust God. You begin to lean not to your own understanding. But in all your ways you acknowledge him. 
because you have gotten a proof in the pudding. Daniel chapter 12, verse 1 through 3, tells us why there should be an urgency to trying God. Why we don't just come arbitrarily and, and we come and we worship and go home and we do it again and again. There is an urgency to our message. There is an urgency to us building a relationship with God. We can sit back and the devil wants to lull us into a sleep. He, want us, he wants to take us to the island of Hawaii where the palm trees sway, where the water is blue. He wants us to just relax. But there is an urgency to the time in which we live. And Daniel chapter 12, verse 1 through 3 says this. And at that time shall Michael stand up, the great prince which standeth for the children of thy people. And there shall be a time of trouble. Y'all see that? There shall be a time of trouble such as never was since there was a nation. That's why we stand here. That's why we encourage you to build a real relationship with God. We haven't seen what's going to happen in the United States. We haven't seen what's going to happen around the world. And if you haven't proven God, then you're going to turn away from God. going to turn away from God. If you don't have the fortitude of the word, if you don't have the fortitude of a relationship with God where he has shown you beyond a shadow of a doubt that when you call on him, when you stand with him, when you worship him, when you give yourself over to him, that he'll never leave you nor forsake you then you'll turn away from God because the time of trouble is coming. And it says everyone that shall be found written in the book and many of them that sleep in the dust of the earth shall awake some to everlasting life and some to shame and everlasting contempt. This is serious. You see, I'm letting you know that the proof is in the pudding. If, 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 if you taste it, if you try God, if you, if you give him an opportunity 100% to show you, God doesn't mind showing you who he is. But it takes 100%. It takes a total surrender for that to happen then you'll be able to say the proof is in the pudding. Here are some of the puddings that God gives to us and wants us to try because the proof is in the pudding. Here, here, here's some of it. You may have read it before. You may not have. But here it is. Matthew chapter 6, verse 25, then 32, then 33, 34. Here's some of the the things that you can prove and that God will prove to you about who he is. Therefore, I say unto you, take no thought for your life, what ye shall eat or what ye shall drink, nor yet for your body. What ye shall put on, is not the life more than meat and the body than raiment? For after all these things do the Gentiles seek. For your heavenly Father knoweth that ye have need of all these things. But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. 
and all these things shall be added unto you. You can't know it. You can't prove it if you don't try God. He says you don't have to take a thought, which is contrary to who we are, to what we have been influenced to do by this world. We feel that we got to think about everything, that we got to take care of ourselves. But God says the proof is in the pudding. If you try me, then you'll know me. If you try me, then you'll know me. You see, I, I, I know I can say, I know Elder Earl Mike can say, I know Elder uh, Vincent Ascent can say, and there are some of you others, Sister Erica Richardson, I know that she can say because, see, we've been in situations where we didn't have control. We land on a table, Elder Earl, land on a table being cut open. Somebody going inside and they taking out stuff and putting in other stuff. And before we went on that table, we had to have a little talk with Jesus. And we had to say, God, Prove yourself to me. Prove that you are a life preserver. Prove that you said you will cover me and keep me. And when God woke me up, when the doctor said you were all right, Elder Asset, when he said the cancer was gone, you knew right then that the proof, <laughs> you knew the proof was in the pudding. And there are some of you, I, I, I don't wish, I don't wish suffering upon anybody. But there are times as the Sabbath school lessons talk about that God affords us to go through crucibles so that we can prove him, so that we can testify of who he is and, and, and what a testimony when you can say that God brought me through, that he kept me when I was under attack of the enemy. Man, wow. Matthew chapter 10, verse 18 through 22. Here's what he says. Well, Deacon Joe Palingo, this is for you, sir. And ye shall be brought before governors and kings for my sake, for a testimony against them and the Gentiles. But when they deliver you up, take no thought how or what ye shall speak. For it shall be given you in that same hour when ye shall speak. For it is not ye that speak, but the spirit of your father which speaketh in you. And the brother shall deliver up the brother to death. And the father, the child, and the children shall rise up against their parents. This is what the Bible says is going to happen. Your family is going to turn their backs on you. You're going to be brought, accused of causing all the hardships and maladies of this world. But God says, you don't have to worry about what to say. 
I'll put the spirit of the living God in you. That's what we were talking about this morning in Sabbath school. God says, I'll put my spirit in you. I will lead you. I will guide you. I will will in you. The proof is in the pudding. I'm so thankful Pastor P.A. is here today. Because can, he can testify of what I said this morning. As a preacher, as a pastor, you get kicked, you get pushed, you get talked about, you get criticized, you get lied on. Can you raise your hand if I'm telling the truth, sir? Amen. But God says that if you will let me lead you, if you will trust me, you see, even Jesus in his humanity had a concern about dying. For us. But ultimately he said, not my will. Not my will, God. But thy will be done. Because Jesus knew that the proof was in the pudding. He already has surrendered himself. He already had overcome the temptations of the enemy taking him to a high mountain and telling him to change these stones into bread. He already had walked on the water. He already had healed individuals. And the Bible tells us that it wasn't under his power. It was under the Father's. So God had already proven himself to Jesus that he could ultimately say, even if I have to die, it's all right. Because the proof is in the pudding. Malachi chapter 3, verse 7 through 12 says this. Even from the days of your father. You've gone away from my ordinances and have not kept them. Jesus says, return unto me and I will return unto you, saith the Lord of hosts. But ye say, wherein shall we return? Will a man rob God? Yet ye have robbed me. But ye say, wherein have we robbed thee? And the Lord of hosts responds, in tithe and offerings. Ye are cursed with a curse. For ye have robbed me even this whole nation. Bring ye all the tithe into the storehouse that there may be meat in my house and prove me. Jesus said, hey, the proof is in the pudding. He said, you can prove me. That I will open the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing that there should not be room enough to receive it. And I will rebuke the devourer for your sake. He says, when, when he's saying, I will rebuke the devourer, you see, situations, the enemy wants to devour us. He wants to take away our confidence. He want to take away the things that God is willing to provide for us. But Jesus says, I will not allow him to do that. If 
you return unto me your tithe and offering. You see, what happens is that we go to work. We have to get up some 5 o'clock in the morning, some work at night, all night long. And so we get this idea that because we work, is our money. <laughs> Brother Bell, we think it's our money. And we believe we got the right to do with it what we want to do. It's funny, Pastor P.A., how we'll go to uh, what they call that? A, a pyramid workshop. I've been there. I'm, I'm just telling y'all the truth. I went there. I had people. <laughs> wow, man. Am I supposed to say that, Lord? I went, I, I went, I went to, to this meeting and the guy was talking about investing and he was talking about how if I invested that I would be able to get residual income which means that I got uh, uh, income coming continuously. Bro Fed, you, you know what I'm talking about by now. So I took, at that time, my last $35,000. Y'all don't hear me. I took 35000 Sister Louise, <laughs> I know y'all, I'm shaking my head like you shake it. <laughs> And I invested it. And I calculated from what he was saying, what the, what the numbers were, that I would have at least $8,000 plus a month coming back of residual income. And when he said that, I, I put my hands behind my head and I laid back. I was like, I'm going to be living it up. <laughs> but what I found out, Elder Boom, he didn't have no proof. <laughs> he... He didn't have no proof in his pudding. And so I saw that $35,000 just evaporate and went away. I'm telling you the God heaven truth. I was sitting there when I knew the money was gone. I was sitting there crying. And I was like, Lord, come on, why, why? And the Lord said, you got to invest in me. I've already proven myself. Because if you give a faithful tithe and a faithful offering, I will keep you. I'll open the windows of heaven and pour out a blessing that there won't be room enough to receive it. And I'm telling you something. That's why now when I receive my increase, the first thing, Elder Johnson, that comes off is God's tithe and his offering because the proof the proof is in the pudding. God has proven himself to me. He's never failed me yet. 
That's what he tells us. Those who are watching me online, you need to give, return a faithful tithe and offering because God says, I am God. I own the cattle on a thousand hills. I'm the one who stood up and, and called everything into existence. He says, everything belongs to me. And if you follow my direction, the proof will be in the pudding. What does having proof from God do for his followers? Let me tell you something. Because here's where we are. If you got a question about who God is, if, if you're not sure that God is going to bring you through, let me tell you something. You need to try him. You need to try him 100. What does having proof from God do for his followers? Number one, it increases our faith. Psalms 27, verse 1 through 6, quickly it says this. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? Let me tell you something. You ain't had to worry about when David said that, that he had proof. He had tasted the pudding of God. He said, the Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? When the wicked, even my enemies and my foes, came upon me to eat up my flesh, they stumbled and fell. David says, I know who God is. I know he's a warrior. I know he's a protector. I know he's a provider. I know that whatever the enemy wants to bring up against me, that God will never forsake me. That's what David said. It increased your faith in God. People may call you crazy. They may say, why are you doing what you do? You can say to them, hey, try it. Because the proof is in the pudding. Don't listen to me. Try it for yourself. Secondly, why? What does proof from God do for his followers? Secondly, it minimizes our failures. Here's what Desire of Ages, page 273, paragraph 5 says. Principle is always exacting. No man or woman can succeed in the service of God unless his whole heart, his whole heart, is in the work, and he counts all things but loss for the excellency of the knowledge of Christ. Ms. White says that everything you got, whatever you got, if you need to give it up for salvation, you need to do that. No man who makes any reserves can be the disciple of God. You can't, you can't hold stuff. You can't take and, and, and put it back and say, well, 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 let me hold that because we know what happened. We know what happened when somebody held back. The Bible says they fell dead on the spot. No man who makes in the reserve can be the disciples of Christ, much less can he be his co-laborer. When men appreciate the great salvation, the self-sacrifice seen in Christ's life will be seen in theirs. Wherever he leads the way, they will rejoice to follow. See, when you follow in Christ, your failures become minimal. You don't do what you used to do. You don't be who you used to be. 
Because God is in charge. And you know that the proof is in the pudding. See, there are folk who used to curse, used to drink, used to dance. Come on now. And if you tell the truth, you did it. I did it. But when we come to Christ, when we try him, he'll minimize our failures. We're no longer who we used to be. We don't do the things that we used to do. He minimizes our failures. Finally, when we allow God to prove himself, it guarantees our future. Revelation chapter 15, verse 2 through 4 says this. And I saw as it were a sea of glass mingled with fire. And them that had gotten the victory over the beast and over his image and over his name and over the number of his name stand on the sea of glass having the hearts of God. And they sing the song of Moses, the servant of God, and the song of the Lamb, saying, Great and marvelous are thy works, Lord God Almighty. Just and true are thy ways, thou King of saints, who should not fear thee, O God, and glorify thy name. For thou only art holy. You see, when you try God, he'll show you that the journey that you're on is paved with his grace and his mercy. He'll show you that if it gets too hard, he'll pick you up and carry you until you're able to stand again. Isn't it time for you to know that you know who God is so that whatever comes, you see what the devil didn't know. He didn't know that Job had a relationship with God. He didn't know that Job had already proven God. He didn't know that Job had already tasted the pudding so that he could say, though he slay me, I will trust him. I'm telling you something in all seriousness. If you don't have God, if he doesn't have you, you hear those words, I never knew you. I never knew you. And so for yourselves, for your families, for your children, for your grandchildren, you should want and say to them, try God. Give him 100% of your heart and he will prove himself to you. Because the proof is in the pudding. I'm telling you. And I know that there are those who have not given him 
opportunity. You look at your bills and, and you pay your bills before you return to God. You haven't tried him. You go to work. Work overtime. And you minimize your services to God and his people because you're too tired to do the will of God. You believe you're too old to continue to do evangelism and outreach. You need to try him. You need to try him because the proof is in the pudding. God is just waiting. He's just waiting for you to taste and see that he is good. And if you do that, some of you are going to come running around this church saying hallelujah, glory to the name of God. Because you've proven him. You trusted him. You surrendered to him. Sing a verse of that. I have decided to follow Jesus. I have God is talking to somebody today. You see, because the truth of the matter is that you know where you are. You know if you're half full, if you're three quarters full. That you haven't given God 100. What I'm saying to you, what God said to me, Prove me. He says, prove me. Do you know what a foundation that you can stand on when you prove God? When you know beyond a shadow of a doubt who he is and how he will keep you and what he's willing to do for you. So here's my appeal for the morning. If you want to say, God, I heard what you're saying to me today. That the proof is in the pudding. And so I'm going to try you. 100. I want you to stand to your feet. Quickly, I want you to stand to your feet. I'm going to try you. 100. I'm going to remove myself from this equation and I'm going to listen to your voice. I'm going to read your word and I'm going to follow it. I'm not going to take a thought for what I should eat for how my life will go. I'm not going to formulate my own words because you said you will speak through me and to me and I'm going to return unto you because you care you said you will open the windows of heaven and pour out blessings help me God to know you for myself Father God these are your people you see them standing. And I know all heaven is standing with them because we know the proof 
is in the pudding. Bless us in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Were you blessed today? Even as a pastor was wrapping up, and I'm going to go ahead and say this because I'm a firm believer if the Spirit led, it will be Holy Ghost fed. Pastor Matthews was reading Malachi. I got a text message on my phone from the same young man that did the flooring that we have at the church here. And I sent a text to him as he was ringing my phone can't talk now, we'll call you right back. Then I followed it up in church. He said, I know. Are you listening? He's, he's right now at a home where there's a, a need for this family. Are you listening to me? And he's contacting us because he knows that this is a church that is giving. A giving church. Without hesitation. And he sent a video. An A student, 12 years old. But he said she doesn't even have a mattress to sleep on. A year ago, there was a roof damage and the house has been molded. And they've taken out the drywall. They just got enough money to be able to get some repairs done. This is not happen chance. This is the Holy Spirit moving at this time, at this location, for us to be able to assist that family. I assured him that we will assist that family. Okay? And I'm just saying that, my goodness, here we're talking about opening the windows of heaven and pouring us out a blessing. So we can be a blessing to others. I'm so glad to be in this house, this place right now. Because there is a moving. God has a plan for us. And we've just got to get out the way. Let the spirit lead us. The Holy Ghost will feed us. We will be able to feed others. And I thank God that this young man feels comfortable enough to catch us at church. I'm calling you because I know you're at church. What a mighty, powerful statement. Amen? And I just say, thank God for his manservant today that tied in and it's as though God just put, let me just say, not only are you going to have pudding, but I'm going to put just a little bit of extra. Huh? Huh? He put some topping on it today. So we just can't talk a good game. We've got to live a good game. And I just reassured this brother. As Ella Johnson came in the room. I was reassuring him. We got your back. You've got her back. You've got the family's back. And thank God for you just reaching out, brother. You know we're going to make it happen. As a matter of fact, 
I say it. As, listen, I have to, Roger, I have to do this. There is a $750 dresser. It's right over here in this overflow room. It has a nick on it. Joe, you've seen that, that dresser? It's still, it's still right now. It has a nick on it. All right? It came from the Walmart giveaway. All right? We tried to give this same dresser to the young man that did the floor. We tried to give it to him. He said, no, me and my wife, we're okay. Give it to someone that has more of a need. Now, see how God has brought this full circle. And I said to him, hey, you know that dresser that we had? He said, yeah. He said, you still got it? He said, oh, my goodness, that's perfect. That's perfect. What a mighty God we stand up. Let's go. We can't stay here all day. Boy, I just don't want to go home right now. Huh? Listen, listen, listen. Be reminded, be reminded that on Wednesday, Pastor Wednesday, as you go on to, just know that prayers will be ascending. All right? Know that. Just know, Father, we thank you for allowing us to be able to be in this place at this time to see the Holy Spirit move. You have touched hearts, you've touched minds through your manservant. For that, we say thank you. Father, only you can orchestrate a telephone call or text message like we've received today. Thank you for pouring out your Holy Spirit amongst this congregation. Now, as we depart from this location, never let us depart from your grace and your mercy. Cover us, shelter us from dangers seen and unseen. As Pastor Matthew goes into surgery this Wednesday, we pray that a special covering is in the room. Guide the hands of the surgeon that only the way that you can do. Protect him, shield him, Bring him back to this location at the appointed time so he too can testify how good you have been. We will give you all the honor, all the praise in that holy name we pray. Amen. Can't nobody do me like Jesus. Can't nobody.